Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel. Uh, now we're going to graph our first log function. The first step is to identify the parent function. We're going to use transformations, so identify the parent function. And the parent function here is just log of x. Uh, keep in mind if the base had been different, for example, this had been base something like 7, then our parent function would be in base 7. Uh, and you'll see in a moment how that affects what we do. Um, so now we're going to make a table of our critical points. Uh, now this part's a little tricky. So um, remember this is log base 10. So this equation is 10 to what power will give me x? Well, if I try to do 0, that's not going to work because there doesn't exist. You can't do 10 raised to a power. That looks like a 0. 10 raised to some power equals 0. You can't get 0 that way. And so x equals 0 is actually not defined in a log function. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll kind of jump the gun here and lead, get you to the point where you see, well, I'm having trouble putting sentences together, but I'm just going to keep going. We actually get a vertical asymptote with a log at x equals 0. So the asymptote is at x equals 0. Remember this log is an inverse of an exponential. Exponentials had a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis logs have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. Okay, so x equals 0 isn't going to work. x equals 1 is going to work. So the question becomes 10 to what power equals 1? And the answer to that is 0. And so 1, 0 is a critical point on our parent function. And then the next piece is what's another friendly number we can get? So I want so again, since it's log base 10 of x, I want 10 raised to what power will give me x? Well, the easiest relatively small number to use is the base, is to use 10. So in other words, log base 10 of 10, because 10 to what power would give me 10? The answer to that is 1. And so the x value is just the base, which in this case is 10 and 10 to the first power is 10. So finding those critical points is a little tricky, but hopefully after you've done a few, um, it'll be a little clearer. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the trans apply the look at the transformations, uh, and then I'm going to change my table. So transformations, the x minus 3 means it's going right 3. The plus 2 afterwards is up 2, so the transformations behave the same. So if we're going right 3, we're going to add 3 to each x value. So we've got 1 plus 3, which is 4, and then 10 plus 3, which is 13. It's going to go a little off my graph, but that's OK. And then up 2 means we're going to add 2 to the y values. So 0 plus 2 is 2, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Now thinking about the asymptote, the vertical asymptote, if I'm moving right 3, then my asymptote is going to go to x equals 3. So my new asymptote is x equals 3. My first critical point is at 4, 2, which is right there. My next one is at 13, 3, which is slightly off the graph, but it's around there. And so we're going to get our log curve which looks something like that, which is an inverted exponential. Um, and again, they're inverses of each other, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, if I ask you for domain and range, the domain remembers all the possible x values. So how far to the left does it go? Well, it stopped. It only goes to negative 3, right? The x values stop at the vertical asymptote. So they don't get to negative 3, but they approach it. Sorry. I said negative 3, I meant positive 3. Hopefully you were paying attention. So the domain, the x values, go from 3 to infinity. The range, remember that's down to up. Does this go down forever? Yes, it does. Does it go up forever? Yes, it does. It looks like it's really flattening out here, but it is continuing to rise. So even though it rises very slowly, it does rise forever. So our range is negative infinity to infinity. And that is how you graph a log using transformations. That's all for now. Thanks.